Hey, it's Kim K. Last week we talked about the crypts and the possible ways that the Starks knew those crypts, who built them, what they're there for, and maybe some implications of what that meant about the old Starks and their relationship with the children and the old gods. So I asked you guys if you wanted more of these interesting things about the crypts, and based on your reaction, you definitely did. So I'm going to quickly cover three more theories about the crypts and what's down there. <laughs> This theory is pretty popular, as it would be really awesome if it was true. But the great thing is, there is actually a lot of evidence pointing towards a dragon being underneath Winterfell in the crypts. Now it's common knowledge that there are hot springs all across Winterfell that heat up the castle and is one of the main reasons it's survivable during the winter. This has led to many of the small folk thinking there's a dragon underneath Winterfell and that the smoke coming up from the hot springs is from this dragon that heats it all up. Now this may seem like misguided rhetoric from common folk that don't really understand the way of the land, but there are actually a lot of hints to show the correlation between hot springs and dragons. The only two other places we know of in A Song of Ice and Fire that have hot springs is the Smoky Mountain of Dragonstone, which is the original place that the Targaryens stayed at after the Doom of Valyria, and then the other one was the Fourteen Flames, which is the Ring of mountains that make up Valyria where they first found the original dragons and the Valyrian stronghold came from. Now there are quite a few other things to add to this theory as well. There's brand scene smoky images of dragons, there's gargoyles that link Dragonstone to Winterfell, and a lot more that you can look into that points towards there being a dragon underneath Winterfell. <laughs> Okay, so this next one really comes back to the last video we did and all the stuff about the White Walkers and why the crypts was originally built and the function of it. Now all the statues in the crypts have the king's image sitting on their throne with a dire wolf at their feet and a sword across their lap. And as said, these swords were placed there to stop vengeful spirits from returning. Now this could be some hocus pocus common people stuff about random superstitious ghosts and spirits and a whole bunch of other stuff that we normally see related to ritual bearings. But this theory believes the term vengeful spirit is referring to a risen dead person or a white from the white walkers which would be a lot more sense for the narrative of this story. It could be possible that the Starks built the tombs not as a deterrent for the old gods or separating themselves from the assimilation but instead to make it so their kings would not rise again as whites while still being able to keep their bodies instead of burning them. It could even be possible that the kings of the old north would become white walkers themselves or were part of the White Walkers themselves. We don't know if the Night's King was a Stark ever in the old ages. We don't know that information yet. So there's still a lot to this theory that needs to be discovered or confirmed before we can really be certain that any of this would be true. Now the final theory for this quick video is about Jon Snow's parentage and the fact that his real birth of R plus Al equals J can be confirmed within the crypts. Now there is so much hinting towards the Stark children, and John especially, having this incredible link to the crypts, and a drawing there to have discover, or meet someone, or something being down there. Now this could refer to dragons, dead Stark kings, or the truth about Jon Snow's parentage. And most people believe it could be Jon Snow's parentage. Now we already know that Bran has discovered the true parentage of Jon Snow. So finding out the truth isn't something that we need more in the narrative. It's confirmation, proof, and a way to be able to tell everyone without dispute that this is true. Now there's a few different ways people believe this can be done. One of the big ones is Rhaegar's harp, which they believe is down in the crypts. It's said that Rhaegar took his harp everywhere with him, and he clearly went to Winterfell to court, capture, or rape, whatever you think happened, Lyanna Stark. But it could be possible that there was a marriage down the crypts, signed with a tomb of Jon Snow pre-built, made for him, with Lyanna's withered blue roses and Rhaegar's harp. Now there's not incredible amounts of information that really point to this tomb existing or the harp really being down there apart from it not being found after Rhaegar's death. But we did know that Ned broke the tradition of only the ruling king or lord of the Starks having a statue in the crypts because he bought one for Lyanna and his brother Brandon, even though none of them technically ever ruled as a Stark king or lord. 
So it could be possible that Ned took the responsibility to pre-make, because we know that they make these statues in advance of the Stark's death, Jon Snow's statue, along with the harp he took from Rhaegar, or if Lyanna had it, and made it there with the inscription of Jon Snow, so that there is proof and evidence he could show to him, possibly when he came back from King's Landing like he promised, to show him his peritage and his true motherhood. Okay, so I wish I could do a lot more on this, but there is so much gaps in the information we know, and we know that a lot more of this is going to come out in the next season and when Winter's Winters come out, so I really want to dive into those when those pieces of materials come to us. Other than that, thanks for watching this video, make sure to check out some of the things I've done, like the previous video, and subscribe to the channel for more videos, hopefully every week. See you guys then.